Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Deadly terror strikes at Israel's southern Re'em Masmiya junction, claiming the lives of two civilians and wounding four others. Israeli Defense Ministry of Galant voices Jerusalem's hope to avert a northern war. IDF Chief of General Staff Lieutenant General Hiltzia Levy emphasizes that plans to launch an offensive on the town of Rafa have been presented to Jerusalem's war cabinet. A deadly act of terror struck Israel's southern Re'em Masmiya junction earlier today. An Israel police spokesman told TV7 that a suspected terror operative arrived at a bus station by car when he reportedly drew a weapon and opened fire toward a number of Israeli pedestrians before an armed civilian on site responded, eliminating the assailant. ברכב בשעה 12 וחצי בצהריים ופותח באש לעבר מספר אזרחים ששהו פה בתחנת האוטובוס. אזרח שמגיע לפה, שהיה פה ממש בסמוך ושומע את קולות הירי, פורק מהרכב, חותר למגע ובעזרת אקדח שהיה ברשותו מנטרל את המחבל. Consequently, two Israelis succumbed to their wounds and were proclaimed dead at the scene, while four others were evacuated to a nearby hospital, where the four individuals were distinctly diagnosed in either moderate or severe conditions. Meanwhile, police bomb disposal experts scanned the area while large police forces conducted extensive searches and ruled out the presence of additional terror suspects. Meanwhile, in relation to the upward trajectory in hostilities along Israel's northern front with Lebanon, Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Gallant stressed that Jerusalem is not eager to go to war with its northern adversaries. Nevertheless, if pressed upon, Israel's defense establishment will not hesitate to respond with force. <laughs> למטוסים שטסים עכשיו ברגעים אלה במעל שמי לבנון יש מטרות. הם יודעים לתקוף אותם, הם יודעים לשנות את התקיפה ממקום למקום. אנחנו יכולים לעשות גזור הדבק מעזה לביירות. אנחנו לא רוצים להגיע לזה. המחירים למדינת ישראל הם מחירים כבדים, הם קטסטרופליים ללבנון ולחיזבאללה, אבל אנחנו רוצים להימנע מה, מהמצב הזה. Jerusalem's top defense official went on to stress that while the IDF has the capacity to strike at any location throughout Lebanon, Israel aims to exhaust every alternative before engaging the Iranian proxy Hezbollah, since the consequences for Israel would be hard, while Lebanon and Iran's Lebanese tentacle Hezbollah will face a catastrophe. <laughs> It is important to know that while the war between Israel and Hezbollah continues to be fought within a so-called low-intensity framework, prospects for miscalculation are seemingly intensifying. Yesterday, within a time span of roughly four hours, Hezbollah launched 25 rockets on the border town of Kiryat Shmona, causing extensive damage to residential buildings and civilian structures. Consequently, the Israeli Air Force conducted extensive aerial strikes, destroying Hezbollah military infrastructure, which further degrades the Iranian proxy's presence south of the Litani River in southern Lebanon, while eliminating three terror operatives who were subsequently recognized as Hezbollah members. Turning to the Gaza Strip, where the IDF continues to make operational gains in the city of Hanunis, while preparing to expand its ground maneuver into the town of Rafah, 
both of which are situated in the southern part of the terror-plagued Gaza Strip. And while Israel's security establishment is working tirelessly to plan for the anticipated operation to eradicate the final four Hamas battalions, which are situated in the town of Rafah, the international community is ratcheting up pressure on Israel to hold off its intended offensive, fearing a humanitarian catastrophe. Despite the IDF's adherence to international law and repeated calls on international organizations to assist in relocating the Palestinian population to avoid unintentional casualties, the United Nations is engaged in a clear campaign against Israel's intentions, calling its request for assistance to relocate the population from Rafah an illusion. The possibility of a military operation in Russia, in, in, in Rafah, with the possibility of the crossing closing down, with the possibility of spillover, um, the, the sort of the Egyptian nightmare, if you like, in a sense, um, is one that is right before our eyes with Ramadan looming. An evacuation to a safe place in Gaza is an illusion. Um, and um, we need to push back on the calls that we're all hearing from the authorities to say, you must help us move the people of Gaza to some safe place. This is an illusion. Um, and we will, of course, do whatever we can to help those people who want to move. I'm sure all of us together in our different ways. But we are not going to be in the lead of any forced evacuation. That should be clear. While the UN position has little merit, global actors are falling in line with the world body's position against that of Israel. Among others, the leaders of Canada, Australia and New Zealand issued a statement warning Israel against any offensive in Rafah, insisting it would be devastating and catastrophic, a position which U.S. National Security Council Coordinator for Strategic Communications, namely retired Rear Admiral John Kirby stressed, is not far from the position held by the Biden administration. I don't see a whole heck of a lot of gap between what, what they've what they've been saying and what we've been saying. I mean, um, uh, I can't speak for them. I can just tell you that we continue to believe that under the current circumstances, without a credible plan, as the president said, to account for the more than million Palestinians that are down in Rafah, make sure that they have a, a place where they can be safe and secure and out of harm's way. Without that credible plan, uh, a, a, a major operation in Rafah would be a disaster. We. We, we, we agree with that, uh, and we're continuing to talk to our Israeli counterparts about what that plan might look like. Similar to the position voiced by the Biden administration, British Foreign Secretary David Cameron asserted London's worry over the looming IDF offensive into the terror-plagued town of Rafah. Well, we are very concerned about what is happening in Rafah because let's be clear, the people there, many of them have moved four, five, six times before getting there. And uh, it really, we think, is impossible to, to see how you can, can fight a war amongst these people. There's nowhere for them to go. Uh, they can't go south into Egypt. They can't go north and back to their homes because many have been destroyed. So we are very concerned about the situation and we want Israel to stop and think very seriously before it takes any further action. But above all, what we want is an immediate pause in the fighting. And we want that pause to lead to a ceasefire a sustainable ceasefire without a return um, to further fighting. That's what should happen now. Uh, we need to get those hostages out, including the British nationals. We need to get the aid in. The best way to do that is stop the fighting now and turn that into a permanent sustainable ceasefire. It is important to know that in contrast to the position voiced by some of Israel's closest allies, RDF Chief of General Staff, Lieutenant General Helzi Alevi, acknowledged that the military presented the Jerusalem War Cabinet with three tangible plans for a Rafah offensive, and that it is waiting a final decision by the top political brass, as Israel remains unwavering in its commitment to eradicate the Islamist terrorists who've instigated this war by committing a massacre upon innocent Israeli civilians and kidnapping 246 individuals, including elderly, women, children, men and infants, 134 of them remain in Hamas captivity to date, the majority of them believed to be held within hideouts in the town of Rafah.
Thank you for watching TV7 Israel News. It is important to highlight that TV7 Israel is a donation based non profit ministry with all of our productions available free of charge. Therefore, if you are blessed by our daily updates and would like to help us bear the costs, we would appreciate if you would consider making a donation. You can do so by visiting our website www.tv7israelnews.com. Separately, I'd like to encourage you pray for the peace of Jerusalem and salvation of Israel. Jonathan Essen wishing you a Shabbat Shalom and Mevorach. And God willing, we'll see you during our upcoming TV7 Israel updates. Until then, Shalom from Jerusalem.